After months of mass public protests this week, Hong Kong's legislature vetoed Beijing's proposal for electoral reform, calling it a plan for fake democracy. 28 lawmakers voted against the plan and only eight legislators voted in support after dozens of pro-Beijing lawmakers left the legislative council chambers just as the vote got underway. The veto, which was expected, has set the stage for continued debate over Hong Kong's future. Emily Lau is chair of Hong Kong's Democratic Party. Of course, we have to continue with the struggle. Uh, yesterday was a very sad day for Hong Kong, and many Hong Kong people were very angry for various reasons, uh, but it's very sad. And uh, so the struggle must continue. Beijing had proposed that nominees for the city's chief executive be chosen by a 1,200-member committee, which opponents of the plan say is filled with business leaders and Beijing loyalists. The proposal spurred 100,000 democracy activists to fill Hong Kong streets last fall, demanding direct elections of the city's leader. Political parties are already gearing up for the next battle, district elections this November. Joseph Chung is a democracy activist and professor at the City University of Hong Kong. We have the district council elections in November this year. Then we have the legislative council elections in September next year. The strategy on the part of the government, on the part of the establishment, seems to be to discredit the pro-democracy camp for vetoing the bill and to try to uh, snatch as many seats from them as possible in the two elections. Some activists worry the impasse on the election reform plan will result in lost seats for pan-democrats in the upcoming elections, making progress on democratic reforms harder within the legislative chamber. Now that the Beijing proposal has been vetoed, Hong Kong will maintain its current electoral process of the city's chief executive being chosen by committee. The next election for Hong Kong's leader is just two years away, in 2017. Shannon Van Sant for VOA News, Hong Kong.